Thank you all for being here with the family on this very difficult day. And thank you to all those who are on Zoom with us as well for being with. I'm going to ask Cantor Schiffman to open our service with a recitation from Psalms. Rabbi Rudin Nuria, if you would lead us in the English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are gathered here today to express our deep abiding love and honor and respect and to say goodbye to our beloved Frank who was taken from us this week. Our hearts are heavy with grief our eyes filled with tears. It's hard to contemplate his not being here with us. He was such a vibrant presence in your lives, in the life of all of the family and his friends who knew him. This is not the way it is supposed to be. To be gathered here almost on the eve of a holiday. There will be an empty place at the Seder this year. It'll be hard to imagine his not being there to share with family. We gather today, not only to honor his memory, but to draw strength from it. To remember all the goodness and the love that he gave to each of you in the hopes that that brings comfort. Frank was a loving, devoted brother to you, Marcy, and to your husband, Lawrence of Blessed Memory, and a loving uncle to you, Matt, and your fiance, Lindsay. Marcy, he was a very devoted, loving husband to you. 
and Maury and Courtney, Bryn and Brent, he was a loving father to you. And a proud, devoted, loving grandfather to Avery, Carter, Laney, Isaiah, Abigail, Ryder, and Ariana. All of you loved Frank in life and now are left to revere his memory in death. We hope that you always feel his presence still with you. Frank was born here in Cleveland in 1952. Marcy, he was your younger brother. It was a very small family. Both your mom and dad were only children. But in reality, your family was very large because it consisted not just of the four of you, but many close friends as well. You and Frank grew up in Cleveland Heights. You told me he was always a cute little brother, always quiet and mischievous, very sarcastic with a sardonic view of life. By the time Frank hit kindergarten, the family had moved to University Heights. The two of you lived on Northward and went to Northwood School. You were, you said, the third house from the corner and the two of you were always late. I guess today was in honor of that memory. <laughs> you both grew up on that playground. You shared that he was basically a schoolyard brat. During the summer, you would be out on the playground and riding bicycles. The rule was just be home for meals and before dark. Your father's mother died when you were both young. But your other grandparents were a lot of fun. And you shared in particular how your grandfather could not afford the movies, but he had a truck because he picked up and delivered scrap. And so he got himself a gig delivering film to the movie houses. And he would always take the two of you with. You would go downtown to Playhouse Square, run through those lobbies, and jump on a piece of cardboard sledding along the carpet. Not too many kids get to do that today. After Northwood, Frank went to Wiley and then to Cleveland Heights High School. But the biggest part of Frank's life during those years was not so much school as it was the synagogue, Taylor Road. Frank was very much a part of the scene at Taylor Road. Hebrew school in those days was four days a week plus Sundays, so the two of you were there a lot. You spent a lot of time getting in trouble with those teachers. And he was part of this cadre of friends at Taylor Road that remained a tight, close circle throughout their lives. One fond memory you shared of those times at Hebrew school was sneaking out with Frank and others skipping your Hebrew school class, getting cardboard or trays and sledding down the hill at Cane Park in the winter. The home the two of you grew up in was a fairly traditional Jewish home. Your father was born in Poland and came to the States fleeing the Holocaust. He was Shomer Shabbos. He raised you both with a love and respect for tradition. Saturday nights were always particularly special as you would gather as a family to make Havdalah. And a nice group of Frank's friends would always show up. And why did Frank's friends always come for Havdalah? Because your dad, before he learned Havdalah was supposed to be over wine, always had beer to make Havdalah. And he would share it with them. And after the beer, it went on to the hard stuff. So there was always a nice group gathered for Saturday nights in your home. After high school, Frank worked for a while and then went to the University of Cincinnati and received a degree in marketing. And then after college, worked with a relationship with the hardware industry and retail stores. He lived in Pennsylvania for a while, but then moved back to Cleveland. And the most important thing that happened to Frank during those years, Marcy, was you. You met in 1976. You were, at the time, you said, dating someone who was on Frank's softball team, but you liked Frank better. <laughs> and he liked you too. It was, you said, kind of a mutual decision to start to go out together. 
You liked him because he was so outgoing and always had lots of friends around. You thought he uh, looked especially nice. You dated just a little over a year before getting married. July 9th, 1978 in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, where you are from. And then the two of you settled here in Cleveland. Marcy, you shared that Frank was a very caring, loving husband. He loved his kids. The two of you always had so much fun together. You said that he made you laugh every day. He loved his motorcycle and you rode with him for many years. He played softball with the same group of guys for some 20 years. After your kids were grown, the two of you moved out to the Northwest, to Washington and Oregon for about a dozen years. And you both really loved the Northwest. It was a nice place to be. You had a good life there. Frank was involved in two motorcycle clubs there, one of which the tribe, he founded himself a Jewish club. The two of you were married for 42 and a half years. 42 and a half years in which together you shouldered life's burdens and shared in life's blessings and built a beautiful family and a legacy of love. I know how hard this is to lose him now. Our hearts go out to you. We pray that God comfort you. Brennan Mora, you also talked about how special your father was to you, the beautiful, loving relationship that you shared with him. Mora, you said that every practice and every game you would play, he was always there. In fact, you said he took several foul balls off the face. That's dedication by a father. He would always catch for batting practice. And the two of you went for softball every Sunday. You said that he was easy to get along with. And you reminisced how the two of you would sit and watch games on TV together. Well, you would watch the game and he would fall asleep and snore. You said that he was always there for you. That he worked long hours, but when he came home, he would play catch with you and football in the street. He arranged for you to cut lawns for your grandparents and for his friends. And he would drive you and them over to their houses. And Bren, you also shared how special your dad was as you were growing up, that he was always there for you, always supportive. And you reminisced how he would take you to baseball and Cavs games with him and said that anything you ever wanted to do, he would always support you in it. When you played field hockey in middle school, he was there whenever he could be to cheer you on. And as the two of you grew older, your relationship with your father deepened and matured in beautiful ways. Your love for each other became even stronger. Maury, your dad loved that you went to Kent. As a freshman, either you would come home or your parents would come to see you in Kent every weekend or every other weekend, very frequently. As you got older, the, your trips home became fewer. They just increased their trips out to Kent to see you. You joined the Jewish fraternity and although, like many Jewish fraternities, it was a fairly tame fraternity, no craziness, your father still liked to tease you by calling it Animal House. All your frat brothers knew your dad because he would come join with all of you to go to dinner or to have a beer. He was, you said, just like one of the guys. And after you finished college, you got a job with the Lake County Captains. And he, at the time, got a job working out in Chardon and Chardon. Until then, you and your sister shared you were a city family. And so you would joke around with him about becoming a hillbilly, about tractors and farms and farm equipment and horses and animals. He also did a lot of work with the captains. And he would walk around the captain's stadium like he was the mayor. Everybody knew him. Everybody liked him. Everybody respected him. They never called him Mr. Sidon. It was always Frank. 
And Bryn, you also reminisced about those hillbilly days. And you share with me how when you found out you were having your first child, your oldest, he was so ecstatic about becoming a grandfather. So loving and proud was he of your children and Maury of your children who were so central to his life. Marcy, he was also very supportive of you as a brother. When anything was going on, the two of you were always there for each other. He was very caring. And Matt, I know that your Uncle Frank held a special place in your heart. When I was asking for words to describe Frank, Matt, you said guardian. I was struck by that. You shared that when the synagogue shootings happened, he helped organize Jewish bikers to protect his hometown synagogue, but that he was also a guardian for the well-being of all the members of his family, including you. He watched over you, Matt. He made sure to be there for you, particularly when your father became ill and then passed away. He stepped in. He intuitively understood that you needed a father figure, that you needed support, someone to look up to, someone who would be with you. And he stepped into that role. You share that, as everyone in the family shared, that he was very funny. But in particular, you said that he taught you all your favorite dirty Jewish jokes. I won't repeat them here. They were good, though. You reminisced about watching your uncle and your cousin play softball together and how when you would join in, you would be nervous because the ball would come in so fast because it was being thrown by older adults who were playing with you. You shared about Frank grilling in the yard and offering you Odul's non-alcoholic beer. And you too remember him falling asleep in the chair in front of the television. Just like he did for his own children, he came to your sporting events. He would check up on you by text, Facebook, and phone calls. Anything you needed, he was there for you. He was a great person who always lifted up your spirits. And one particular memory that stands out in your mind that was so special was the day he woke you up at 4 a.m. and said, do you want to go see the hot balloons? And Nobody else wanted to go, so it turned out to be just the two of you. You went and spent hours watching those balloons rise into the sky. And it was a very special time to be with him. You also shared that you ate your first insect with him, salted crickets. There are so many beautiful memories. Memories of that family trip to the Dude Ranch in upstate New York. Brandon Mori, when you were in high school, you said it was not a great trip, not too many bugs and too many hikes, but the trip to Cooperstown made it all worthwhile. Marcy, you and Frank took cruises together. Holidays together were spent at the extended family at your or Frank's parents' homes. And Marcy, you and Frank always wanted to have Bryn and her children over to continue Jewish traditions with them. Frank was an extraordinary person, filled with so much love and caring, with a wry sense of humor, a sarcastic outlook, but funny and always supportive, caring, he was a talkless kind of guy who liked to get down to what was most important. He was sort of a fix-it guy. At least he would tell you how to fix things. Although, Marcy, you shared that he wasn't always so great at fixing them himself. <laughs> Frank.
Frank leaves behind a, a beautiful legacy. He taught you all the importance of family and the meaning of unconditional love. He taught you what it means to be there for the people that are important in your life. He always had good words of wisdom to share. And even if you didn't agree with a particular piece of advice he would give, talking to him always just made you feel better and supported. And he lives on in each of you and the values you have taken from him and the way you've shaped your own lives. Maury, you even sound like him. And uh, there is so much of him in each of you that he'll always be with you. Marcy, when you and Frank came back to Ohio because of Frank's cancer, that was a very difficult time. You gave up this idyllic life, but you knew this was where you needed to be, where he could get the care that he needed and where you would both be in your family to support you. And you supported him through this last several years of illness, hardship, always standing by his side, always supporting him, always helping him, always comforting him and lifting him up with your love, just as he had done for you, your whole married lives. If only, if only he could have beaten the cancer. He fought it for a long time. He fought it very hard and he was successful. Really until just a couple weeks ago. Then things changed overnight. Marcy, you told me that you told the nurses, as long as Frank Kibitz is with you, you'll know he's okay. And then the day came when he stopped kibitzing. And they knew and you knew that things were not okay. You rallied around him, stayed by his side, watched over him. You couldn't stop the cancer from advancing. You couldn't save his life. But you could make sure that you were with him, that he felt your presence every single day that he felt your love and your support every single day. And you gave him that great gift right up to the very last day. In fact, Marcy, when you left him on that last day, he seemed to be holding his own. You had no idea that he would pass so quickly. He passed about two hours later. And I have no doubt, no doubt at all, that the reason you couldn't tell that he was about to pass is because he didn't want you to. Because he was, even as he was struggling with the cancer, even as he was in the process of leaving this world, he was still watching over you. He was still watching over you. He did not want you to grieve. He did not want to cause you pain. And so, though we could not fight enough to stop the cancer, he fought to hold it off to maintain himself until you were gone. And only once you left did he allow his soul to slip away. sparing you from being there and having to experience that moment of intense loss. It was a great act of love on his part. The giving back of the great love that you gave to him. And now Frank is gone from this world physically. 
but his spirit is not one. Frank's soul is with God in heaven and is also with each of you in your hearts. He'll always be with you to watch over you, to nurture and support you from within, even to offer you guidance through that little voice that you'll hear in your heart that you'll know will be him. He'll always be there. And he'll always be there in the parts of him you've taken into yourselves and the ways in which he's transformed you with his love. There's a beautiful rabbinic tale about a man who's wandering through the desert and he is tired and hungry and thirsty, very weak, about to die. He's stumbling along where in the distance he sees what looks like water. He's sure it must be a mirage, but desperate, he runs towards it. And as he gets closer, he realizes it's not a mirage at all, that it's an oasis with a beautiful river running past a huge tree laden with the most delicious looking fruit. As he reaches the river, he dives in and he cools himself in its waters and refreshes himself. And then he drinks from the water until he has slaked his thirst. He climbs out of the river and he plucks the fruit from the tree and he eats until his hunger is gone. And then he leans back against the tree with its broad branches and leaves granting him shade. He falls asleep. He sleeps a very long time. And when he wakes, he's no longer hungry, no longer tired, no longer thirsty. He's fully refreshed. He has the energy to go on. And he gets up ready to resume his journey. And before he leaves that spot, he turns to the tree and he says, Oh tree, oh tree, how can I bless you? Should I bless you that you should have a beautiful river running past you to nourish your roots? But you have this magnificent river. Should I bless you that you should have a strong trunk to withstand the winds of life? Should I bless you that you should have broad branches filled with fruit? You have all these things. Then the man paused for a moment and he said, O oh, tree, O oh, tree, I know how I shall bless you. May your saplings be just like you. That is perhaps the greatest blessing of all in Frank's life. That you, Bryn, and that you, Maury, are so much like your father, that you have so much of his qualities. That you, Matt, as his nephew, have absorbed so many of his good qualities into your life. That he has had such a profound positive impact upon you, Marcy, as a loving husband, and you, Marcy, as a loving brother to you. The greatest gift and blessing of all is that he lives on in each of you. And on your children as well, and the grandchildren. We pray that you always feel his presence with you. May his memory be for a blessing. And we say it together, Amen. We'll rise now for the memorial prayer. Malokalashim <laughs> Began Eden Zemru Kato Ana Bal Harachamim Hasir Besaka Pekaliola Mihim Utsra Bitra Haibanish Mato Aranai Wanakalato Yano Apeshaloma Mishkava Venoma Amen O God, full of mercy who dwells on high. 
We pray that you grant perfect peace beneath the wings of the Divine Presence in the highest levels of heaven among the holy and the pure who shine like the glow of the firmament to the soul of our beloved Frank who has been taken to his eternal home. O oh Lord, we pray that you watch over his soul that you grant him reward for all the love and goodness he shared in this world. Bind his soul in the bond of everlasting life. May the Lord be his portion, may he rest in peace. And we say together, Amen. At this point, we're going to lower the casket into the grave and then share together in covering it.
by the Cherno placing earth on the grave. The covering over the grave is understood in our tradition as Chesed Shal Emet, the highest act of loving kindness that one person can do for another, to make sure that their final moments are taken care of by those who knew and loved them. It's in this sense that I'll place some earth upon the grave and then invite family first and then others gather here to do so as well. Um, a, a couple words. Uh, please be careful. First of all, as you can see, the, the ground is very wet and full of clay. So it's a little bit hard to maneuver or the shovels. So just be careful. Um, and um, if you uh, have gloves and want to wear them, you may want to wear them to avoid touch or else uh, the funeral home has gloves they can give you. Um, and if not, you may want to sanitize your hands afterwards. Um, and I'll ask please that when you use the shovel, after you've used it, that you return it to the earth. Don't pass it to the next person. The tradition is that we don't pass along the shovel in order to indicate that we don't desire to pass along sorrow.
We'll join together now in the words of the Mordor's Kaddish. I'll invite everyone to come a little closer. The family to stand together. Please join with me. Yit Gadal, the Yit Gadash, Shemei Rabah, the Alama, the Vara, Kirute, the Amlich, Mahute, the Chaye Khan, the Yom Echon, the Chaye, the whole Bay Israel, the Agala, who is Man, Karib, Imru, Ame, Yehe, Shemei Rabah, the Vara, the Olam, who Ome, Omaya, Yit Vara, the Shabbat, the Pahar, the Dromam, the Nase. Vietadar, Vietale, Vietalal, Shemir Kurusha, Brifu, the Ela, Minkol, Vyakata, Vashirata, Tushbakata, Venezamata, the Amiram, the Ama, the Imru, Ame, Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, the Chaim, Alenu, the Alkol Yisrael, the Imru, Ame, O Se Shalom, Bim Roma, who ya Ase Shalom, Alenu, the Alkol Yisrael, the Imru, Ame. We'll pause for a moment of silent prayer and meditation. inherits that which is mortal, but only the dust returns to dust. The soul, which is eternal, returns to God who gave it. And in another sense, God gives us the ability to live on through deeds of loving kindness, which time cannot destroy. We have gathered together to bid goodbye to our dear Frank. Grateful for the gift of his life, we pray that his words and deeds have a profound impact upon our lives. With a contrite heart, we repent of any wrong we may have committed against him and grant that his sins be pardoned. O Lord, we pray, grant Frank a place of blessing, honor, and glory by your right hand side in heaven. Grant him rich reward for the love and the goodness he shared in this world. You, God, who are the father of orphans and protector of widows, we pray that you watch over the souls of all the members of Frank's family that are bound up with his soul. Comfort them in their time of loss. Grant them healing, hope, and strength. May the Lord be his portion. May he rest in peace. May his memory always be for a blessing. And we say it together. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask for everyone except for the uh, family to please form two lines, one on each side.